Hello, my name is Sean Ditchko with the University of British Columbia Physics and Astronomy Department. In the past couple videos in this series, you've been learning about nuclear physics and fission. And by this point, you know that the fission products, also known as nuclear waste, produce a lot of heat because of beta decay. And this is true in the reactor core even when it's shut down. Now, at the time of this video, on about April 1st, in the reactor in Fukushima, Japan, there was still about 14 megawatts of heat being produced by the nuclear waste and fission products. And the authorities were pouring lots of water on the reactor in order to cool it down and avoid a meltdown. In this video, we calculate how much water is needed to cool this nuclear waste. The formula for the amount of heat energy transferred to this cooling water at Fukushima is delta Q equals the mass of the water times its specific heat capacity times the change in its temperature. It's going to be going from the initial, say, 10 degrees Celsius up to 100 degrees. So this delta T is going to be 90. I'll show you that in a minute. Plus this water is going to be boiling off. And then so there's latent heat of vaporization, which will absorb lots more energy. And that's mass times the latent heat of vaporization per kilogram, capital L. What we're interested in knowing is how much heat energy is absorbed per kilogram of water when it boils. So let's divide both sides of this equation by m. And we get delta Q over m, the amount of heat energy per kilogram, is going to be specific heat capacity times change in temperature plus L. Now for water, this specific heat capacity is 4.180 kilojoules for every kilogram per every Celsius degree, or Kelvin degree if you prefer. And this delta T, if we assume the cooling water initially has a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, then it's going to be boiling at 100, and so the change in temperature will be 90 Celsius degrees. And then we'll add to that the 2,260 kilojoules per kilogram of latent heat of vaporization. And this calculation says that 2,636 kilojoules are absorbed for every kilogram of water when it boils if it has an initial temperature of 10 degrees. And that's 2.6 megajoules per kilogram is maybe more convenient units to use. Let's play around with this number a little bit to get a sense of what it means. If you had some heat source that was producing 2.6 megajoules per second, which is 2.6 megawatts, and you could multiply that by one kilogram being boiled off for every 2.6 megajoules as we calculated here. And you'll see that the megajoule units cancel, leaving us with kilograms per second. We're going to discover that there's one kilogram boiled off every second given a heat source of power 2.6 megawatts. Now out of curiosity, how long would it take to boil off a metric ton? Well, you'd have 1,000 kilograms in a metric ton and multiply that by one second for every kilogram being boiled, as I calculated here. And to turn that into units that are maybe easier to understand, we'll multiply this by one minute for every 60 seconds to convert it into minutes. So seconds cancel, the kilograms cancel. What we're figuring out here is the amount of time in minutes to boil off 1,000 kilograms given a heat source of power 2.6 megawatts. And the answer to this is 16.67. Well, we're just estimating, so we'll take only two significant figures, 17 minutes. Now, the real question is how quickly does the decay heat at Fukushima boil off water? Now, the best estimate we could find for the power of the decay is about 14 megawatts on April 1st. This uh, web page is from MIT Nuclear Information Hub and they've made a graph here showing how the power of the reactors is, uh, changes with time and you know at the very beginning it had lots of power because they were still turned on and then immediately after the scram which is this word for putting the control rods deep into the reactor in order to shut down the fission um, the, the heat uh, decays really quickly and then slowly decreases from this point down. And you can see that after even a year, there's still quite a bit of 
heat being produced by these beta decay of the nuclear waste. But uh, let's take this day as our example, and that's about 14 megawatts. This is uh, for all three reactors. Reactor 1, 2, and 3 are listed here, and the units are megawatts. So we have 14 megawatts being produced by the decay of radioactive waste at Fukushima on April 1st, approximately. So we'll take the 14 megajoules per second or megawatts of decay heat produced at the all the reactors combined, times that by one kilogram boiled off for every 2.6 megajoules, as we calculated before, assuming the cooling water starts at 10 degrees Celsius. And that equals 5.4 kilograms boiled off every second. And turning this into uh, tons per minute, we have 1,000 kilograms for every metric ton, and we'll times that by one second for every 5.4 kilograms in order to cancel away the kilograms, leaving us with seconds. And we'll convert those seconds into minutes by multiplying by one minute for every 60 seconds. And this gives us 3.1 minutes. Now, since these are really rough estimates, we're only going to keep one significant figure here. And so we'll say that there's one ton boiled every approximately three minutes. And this is about 19 days after the tidal wave hit on April 1st. They would have so needed even more than a ton what, every a struggle they had just to cool the nuclear wings. In those first few days after the tidal wave because it's an enormous difficulty to come up with this huge amount of water. If you recall from the news coverage of the Fukushima event, they started getting really desperate in their cooling efforts and they started using salt water. And now that we've done this calculation, you have a better understanding of why using salt water is such a problem. Because if approximately one ton of water is boiled off every three minutes or so, and there's even more being boiled off in three minutes uh, right after the tidal wave hit, um, what's left behind when salt water gets boiled? Well, you get lots of salt. And this salt can build up in the reactor and it could create an insulating layer around the reactor, which defeats the whole purpose of cooling it. And also it could, you know, gum up the works. It could block tubes and so water can't flow through certain parts or there could be issues created by the salt buildup. So if you made it through all three videos of this series, then congratulations. You've learned a lot. You've learned about the chart of nuclides. You've learned about nuclear fission. And you've learned why it's not possible to turn off a nuclear reactor, really, because there's always this decay heat created by beta decay of the fission products. And you've also done a rough calculation of the huge amount of water that's boiled off in trying to cool this uh, nuclear waste. So thank you for listening and uh, check out more videos from the uh, C21 project of the University of British Columbia Physics and Astronomy Department.